Hey and welcome! Today I'm going to show you how to transcribe audio or video files that are not in English. Assembly AI follows a bunch of languages including Spanish, German, Dutch, Hindi, Japanese and more and we're always working on new languages to include on our API and I'm going to show you two ways of doing it with Assembly AI's API. The first one by specifying the language that you're passing the audio file in and the other one by using Assembly AI's auto language detection feature. So let's get started. So there are a couple of steps to this project as I've written here. First, we need to set up a connection to Assembly AI. Then we need to upload the file that we have in our local file system to Assembly AI. If you have a URL, if you have your audio or video file uploaded somewhere on the internet, you can also just pass this URL too. Uh, then we will start the transcription and then we will do something to receive the transcription. Uh, all right, so let's get started. The first thing that I need to do is import the requests library. Uh, the suggestions I have here is basic, uh, by the way, uh, GitHub Copilot. So if you want to, if you're curious about why I'm getting suggestions all the time. Uh, all right, so we're going to use a requests library. In these library, the first thing that I need to do to uh, send the audio file that I have locally to Assembly AI is to send a post request. So I will start a post request. And then I'm going to have to fill this in with some things. The first thing, of course, is the upload endpoint of Assembly AI. And let's create an upload endpoint variable. And the next thing that I need is the headers. The headers are going to include my authentication key. So I also need to create the headers. If you do not yet have your Assembly AI API key, it's very easy to get. All you need to do is go to assemblyai.com or you can use the link in the description below and create a free account by going through the Get Started button. And once you have your free account, you can go and click here to get your API key. And all you have to do here then for authorization, we just paste it here. And the last thing that I need in this uh, post request is the data, of course. And this data, because we are reading it from our local system, we're going to need a read file function. This is a function that we use in some of our tutorials before too. It's basically you give, a, give it a certain chunk size and it reads in chunks, reads this audio or video file in chunks so that it can be uploaded to uh, Assembly AI's servers. Uh, all right, so I also need to pass the file name to it. So what I want to do in this project is to get the file name from the command line arguments. So for that, I need to import system and then I will get an argument list. Uh, the first argument I'm going to get will be the file name. And the second argument I'm going to get will be the language name. So which language we want to do the transcription in. Um, arg list two. All right, once I get the file name, I can also pass it with the read file function. And by this way, we would be uploading our audio file to assembly AI. So I will just copy and paste this code where it belongs. Uh, let's see here, we set up a connection with assembly AI with the upload endpoint and headers and here we upload the file to assembly AI. The next thing that we want to do is to start the transcription but to start the transcription we need to get the URL of where this audio or video file has been uploaded to. So I'll just save this as a response. I'll call it the upload response. And in this upload response I can get the audio URL. There you go, it already gives it to me. Upload response, JSON, URL. But I'm not sure if this was called URL or audio URL. So let's run this once and see what the upload response looks like so that I know I'm calling the correct uh, part of the JSON response. Let's comment this out. So let's run this. All right, all I have to do now is to go into the transcription folder and then run my transcription script. 
I will pass the German audio to it for now. We will not get a transcription yet, but just uh, to try it out. Yes, I get a response. My audio file has been uploaded and the field is upload URL. So that's, that's good to know. It's not just URL, but it is upload URL. And this way I now have the audio URL of this file on assembly AI servers. So now it's time to start a transcription. For that, I'm going to again send a request, uh, again a post request, this time to assembly AI's transcription endpoint. So I will note it down here again, and point. And that will be the first thing that I'm gonna to pass to this post request. And then the next thing, again, going to be headers. And I will already have my headers here. And lastly, I need to pass some information under the variable JSON. So let's create that, my JSON information, my information JSON format that I'm passing. The first thing is the order URL, of course, that we already parsed from the uh, upload response. And the next thing that I want to do in this specific one here is where we can also specify the audio intelligence features that we want, for example, sentiment analysis, content moderation. But this time what I want to do is I want to pass the specific language that I want this transcription to be in. So that's why I'm going to say language code. Uh, you can hard code it here, of course, but we already got this information from the user. So I'm just going to pass language. Uh, you can see what kind of codes, language codes that you can use in Assembly AI's documentation. Here it is. I will, as I said, leave a link to it below this video so you can go check it out here. Uh, but so far, the supported languages are different types of English, Spanish, French, German, Italian, Portuguese, Dutch, Hindi, uh, and Japanese. We also have some other ones uh, under construction so far. So. Uh, let's try this out. We pass the JSON information and next what we want to do, of course, is to get and re read the response to this. So I'm going to say, call this transcription response. But this, of course, will not be the transcription immediately because transcriptions take a little bit of time. That's why uh, we're going to get an name or ID for this transcription and then we're going to pull the assembly AI servers to get this transcription back. So for that I'm going to need to extract an ID but let's print this transcription response to see what it looks like. All right, our transcription has been started. Uh, this is the response we got from the upload and this is the response we got by starting the transcription. How we're going to find this transcription is through this ID. So I'm going to have to get that in my code. Uh, I will call this the transcript ID and that would be transcription response.json. Not in there, but next to it. ID. I'm going to combine the transcription endpoint with this transcription ID in order to create a new poll endpoint and that would be called the polling endpoint. This polling endpoint is going to be the place where I'm going to ask to see if my transcription has been done and that's going to happen under the received transcription section. What we're going to do is basically keep polling assembly AI to see if the transcription is done until it is done. Uh, one thing that I want to fix here before we, before we move on, of course, is uh, that we need a little slash here. All right, so in here, what I'm going to do is again, send the request. But this time I get request because I'm not sending anything, I'm only asking for information. I'm going to send this request to the polling endpoint and I'm going to have to include my headers again. We're going to get a response from this request, of course, and inside this request, inside this response, we're going to have something called the status. This status is either going to be submitted, processing, uh, or completed. If it errors out, of course, it could also be error, um, but if basically what we're going to wait is completed. So I will call this the status 
and if status is completed we're going to take the um, transcription and write it in a file and if it's uh, not failed good guess <laughs> github copilot if it's error then we can print the transcription has errored out and then break this loop Uh, we have to break it, of course, if it succeeds too. But if anything else happens, if it did not error out or if it did not complete, I can just print what the status is and then wait for two seconds maybe. I need to import time too here. And then continue. All right, so let's see what we're going to do once it is completed. Uh, what I want to do is basically save the transcription in a file. Let's see if Copilot can come up with the with what to do here. Yes, this, this sounds good. We will create a transcription.txt and we're going to write uh, the transcription from the polling response inside this txt. But it, it is not called transcript. This is the only difference. It is called text and we will get it from the polling response. All right, this looks good. Uh, one thing that I wanna add here is I don't only want to call the file transcription, I want to call it the name of the language and then underscore transcription. All right, let's run this with our German audio file and see what we get. Python transcription. German audio and I will pass it the DE language code. All right, it looks like our transcription is done. Uh, it processed for a little bit and then it was done. So let's hear it out and see if everything went well. So this is the transcription that was produced. And I will also play the German audio. Was passiert, wenn plötzlich ein winziges schwarzes Loch, etwa so groß wie eine Münze, neben dir auftaucht? Kurz gesagt, du stirbst. In der Praxis kommt es allerdings auf zwei Dinge an. Ist das schwarze Loch so groß wie eine Münze oder hat es die Masse einer Münze? Ein all right, it all looks good to me. Uh, now, so here I also have a Dutch audio. Dat niets eruit kan snappen, zelfs geen licht. Niemand weet wat er precies gebeurt als je in een zwart gat wordt gezogen. These are both pieces of audio that talk about the black hole, by the way, if you were wondering what they're uh, about. Uh, I want to show you how to transcribe the Dutch audio without specifying the language. And that's actually quite simple to do once you have this code. Uh, what we need to do here is the language code. So we were spec specifying the language code here, right? Instead, what we're going to say is language underscore detection. And we're going to set this to true. So the language we're going to get from the command line arguments is only going to uh, help us create, uh, uh, where is it? Um, the transcription files uh, name. So let's run this with the Dutch audio and see what we get. And now the transcription is done. Let's see if it worked or not. Here we have the NL transcription text. I will make it a bit bigger so that we can see it. And I will also start playing the Dutch audio. Een zwart gat is een gebied in de ruimte waar de zwaartekracht zo sterk is dat niets eruit kan ontsnappen. Zelfs geen licht. Niemand weet wat er precies gebeurt als je in een zwart gat wordt gezet. All right, it looks like this text is in Dutch uh, and it looks like it is quite uh, correct. So, 
Uh, one thing that you need to keep in mind though when you're using the auto language detection feature is that your audio or video file needs to be at least 50 seconds long. There needs to be 50 seconds of talking for the model to be able to detect it automatically, detect the dominant language automatically in your file. But that's it for transcribing audio or video files in languages other than English. I hope this was all clear for you. If you have any questions, don't forget to leave a comment below. If you want to follow along, if you want to do it yourself, you can go grab your free API token from Assembly AI, either by going to assemblyai.com or by using the link in the description. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.